Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to graph isoquants from fixed proportions production functions. So a little background. So fixed proportions production function will take the following form where the firm's quantity of output will be the minimum of AL or BK. A and B are just parameters greater than zero. L is units of labor, K units of capital. This is a special case production function. The isoquants from this type of production function are going to be L-shaped, having a vertical and horizontal section. The optimal input mix will always occur at the elbow of the isoquant, where the horizontal and vertical section meet. All right, let's do some examples now. So here is the production function, fixed proportions production function. And we want to graph an isoquant where output equals 10. So we want to find all combinations of labor and capital that would produce 10 units of output given this particular production function. So the first step is to take what's in parentheses here, and we're going to set that equal to the quantity of output. So 2L equals 10, and you just solve for L, dividing through by 2L equals 5. The next step is this last term here, k, what's ever over here to the right of the comma, we're going to set that equal to the quantity of output, again, in this case, 10. So this is easy, k equals 10. The input mix of L equals 5 and k equals 10 is the elbow on the L-shaped isoquant for q equals 10. Note here, if we were to plug these values, L equals 5 and k equals 10, into the production function, you're going to get the minimum of 2 times 5, or 10. So the minimum of 10, or 10, is just 10. So indeed, this point is a point on the isoquant for q equals 10. So the first thing I want to do in graphing the isoquant is plot that point, that elbow point, finding where l equals 5 and k equals 10. So we got units of capital on the vertical axis, units of labor on the horizontal axis, so L equals 5, K equals 10. So that is the elbow of the isoquant. And so from here, there's going to be two sections, a horizontal section. So the isoquant will run to the right here in a horizontal fashion. And then it's going to move from here in an upwards fashion, in a vertical fashion. And that will define our L-shaped isoquant. So let's see that on the next slide. So this is the, what that isoquant looks like for Q equals 10 with fixed proportions. So a few things we could do. What about if L equals 5 and K equals 20? So L equals 5, K equals 20. We're not getting any more output. We're still producing along this isoquant where Q equals 10. We can verify that by putting this, this input mix into our production function, which was a minimum of 2L or K. So if L is 5, and you have 2 times 5 here, or 10, and K equals 20, so the minimum is indeed 10. So if you have 5 units labor and 10 units of capital, having any more capital beyond 10 doesn't do you any good because you're limited by that 5 units of labor. Likewise, if L equals 30 and K equals 10, so here K is 10, L is 30, we're still on the isoquant associated with 10 units of output. We could verify that by plugging this input mix into our production function of 2L or K. So 2L in this case is going to be 60. K equals 10. The minimum of 60 or 10 is 10. So this is another way of producing 10 units of output. Not a very efficient way, but technically it is a way you could produce 10 units of output. You're using more labor than you really need to, given that you only have 10 units of capital. All right, uh, let's move on. Uh, another point is that the capital labor ratio for the optimal input mix is 10 divided by 5. So at this elbow here, we got 10 units of capital, 5 units of labor. So 10 divided by 5 is the ideal or optimal input mix. It will always equal 2 regardless of the input prices. All right, so what I'm doing now is using that same production function, let's find a higher isoquant where Q equals 20. 
This is what it's going to look like graphically, this black isoquant. So using our production function, setting our output now uh, equal to 20, we're going to set 2L equal to 20, solving for L, and then set K equal to 20. And that would be our ideal point on the isoquant for producing 20 units of output. 20 units of capital, 10 units of labor. So again, the ideal capital labor ratio is still 2. 20 divided by 10 is 2. That doesn't change. So the firm will always use inputs in this fixed proportion, 2 units of capital for each unit of labor. Here's another production function, slightly different, but still fixed proportions. We got 2L or 3K here, the minimum of 2L or 3K. Let's do an isoquant for Q equals 60. So setting 2L equal to 60, solving for L. Setting 3K equal to 60, solving for K. We have the elbow on our L-shaped indifference curve where K is 20 and L is 30. And then just going to do a horizontal line from that point and a vertical line upwards from that point. That will define your isoquant for Q equals 60. Let's do another example. Output equals a minimum of 1 half L or K. Let's find an isoquant for 10 units of output. Setting 1 half L equal to 10, solving for L, we get 20. And just setting K equal to 10, we have that point, that elbow point on the isoquant. So we have that elbow point on the isoquant, a horizontal line to the right, and a vertical line upwards. We graphed our isoquant. Oh, and the ideal capital labor ratio in this case is going to be 10 divided by 20, or 1 half. One unit of capital for two units of labor. So regardless of how much output you produce, this firm will always employ capital and labor in this fixed proportion. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.